Welcome to No Shame. This is episode 44 of the No Shame podcast. I'm here at the, the Lima Powered SPG Dublin 24 studio. We have a man on the couch today. You know, man after my own heart. I think I say that too much. But these are maybe maybe these are just the guests so you get on. Mm. Everyone else is just fuckers. Really. That's <laughs> it, yeah. We have Philly McMahon, a uh, absolute legend, one of our own as well. And um, how many, many twins did you win with the team? Uh, six at the minute. Six Ooh, all Ireland. Yeah. Six all Ireland. Yeah. This man holds under him. And if, if if you're watching in a different country, GAA is 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 better than all the other sports, and it's tougher. If you play football, you're probably half of toughness of a GAA player. Yeah, <laughs> I get guys that come in. And really We're only a half of toughness of MMA fighters, by the way. So I'm sure about to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I get guys that come in, right? GAA lads, and that's why I say, like. I use GA lads as an, as an example because in amateur MMA guys are so kind of like that tough and they rip their hands out and stuff and stuff like that and I say to them right, you need to prepare this technique for the GA lad yeah. because I'm not saying, he might have the fighting skills but he has that toughness and yeah, he roll yeah, with the way good. it goes I, I had a lad come in he was like um, he had a pair of GA shorts on and I was like Jesus, did you play a bit of guy? and he was like yeah yeah the advanced session was on and this was, this was in a different gym and he was, he was like uh, or was jump into this a bit of wall wrestling and he done fucking brilliant <laughs> he was taking people down no one could take him down and all yeah. like that just pure GAA strength yeah, yeah. and anyway let's go back to the start of all of this how how do you end up how do you end up as a GAA player uh, I suppose going back to when I was when I was a young kid I, I kicked the, the the ball off the flats in Ballymun to, to see what my brother John was doing he was seven years older than me um, so see my sort of mischief he was getting up to I was a little rat I ran up to my man and said hey look he's down there drinking or smoking or doing whatever she'd give me money for sweets so, <laughs> so I started playing <laughs> football yeah, yeah so yeah I, and, and I suppose back then Ballymun was rampant with drugs and crime so uh, unfortunately John got caught up in that and uh, for, for a long time um I would have tried to hang around with my older brother to be the, the cool kid, but that's, uh, that's kind of always the way. Yeah, it? it kind of got to the stage where John fell heavily into drug addiction, and I would have hung around with John just so that he wouldn't take drugs drugs in front of me. So, Jesus, so yeah, so John's addiction pushed me to football because uh, all the anger and the aggression I had built up, I was going to change rooms and, and kind of saying, Do you know, why have you not got a perfect family? Why have I got a brother as a drug addict, mm. being un uneducated and the whole stigma around addiction, that's the way I felt that I had to to deal with it. And uh, Paddy Christie, who was my uh, mentor, and he was a, he's a role model, sporting role model for me, uh, he came to the local primary school and looked at the kids that had a, had got this energy built up from wherever they had a home and pushed it into sport. So that's why I probably became an, an aggressive footballer, because I had all this anger built up from my home. Um, a lot of people would say I have a bit of an alter ego on the pitch and off the pitch, but that's essentially how I play. It came about with football. And I, I think it's, it can be very similar in fighting as well. Mm. Um, I think when you put them lights on somebody, like you bring out that primal side of them, you know what I mean? It mm. strips them back to that skeleton. And they, and we, we all, everyone just wants to be a nice deal to get through that day and not have the thing, but I think if you put guys like me and you on a battlefield, <laughs> it's like, yeah! <laughs> feel comfortable, Philly. I feel great. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. There's something in there, you know what I mean? I was explaining yeah. this yesterday. I done a daily thing with Dan Hardy yesterday, like a breakdown, and it was the same idea as I was trying to explain to him what Irish people have in them. Mm. And I don't know whether other nations have that in them. You know? I don't know. Yeah. Well, we've battled. Uh, the, the big thing about Irish history is that it's a horrible thing to say, but we've failed a lot in Irish, yeah. in Irish history. Um, we've always... Yeah, um, got the better. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you look at the Irish rugby team, you look at them competing against New Zealand. The New Zealand, the All Blacks have always had a heritage of fighting and 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 uh, battling. And but the Irish had heritage and and the, the way we've kind of battled against uh, our troubles and uh, is that we've probably you know a lot of people think we're, we're big, we're brave, we're strong. We are, we are that. Like, but we've at times been. Uh, We've kind of betrayed our, our, ourselves in many We've ways, you know. Lost. Yeah, yeah. More, more uh, times, that what you, mean? you know, if you go back to the cultural times years and years ago, it's it's just a, it's you know, unfortunately, we look if you even look at World War One, and you look at the, the Irish people that went to fight for in World War One, and people go, oh, how dare they fight for a different country? How dare they fight for the, for the Brits and everything else? 
we didn't have a government back then. Like, That's you know, why no one knew you know, going on. Churchill was welcomed into, into Cork yeah. and um, these people had to fight before, for what they believed in back then. And then you fast tracked at the World War Two. Then you're kind of asking questions. Hold on a second. Now we've had 1916 and everything else. And then you go to the troubles. And and nowadays you have this this big um, propaganda around the IRA and the provisional IRA and everything else. And it's it, it, it now we're saying it was dirty to, to fight for your for, for your country and stuff like that. But for me nowadays, Paddy, it's about fighting for your beliefs. What's your beliefs? Mm-hmm. Sometimes then beliefs need to change. Every Tuesday and Thursday, I, I actually. I mean, uh, Mount Joy helping prisoners change their beliefs, and I think, um, and that's who we are as Irish people, like you know. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree with you more about the idea of um, change, and I think that that is a huge part now, and it it's on, it's on, it's on the agenda, isn't it? People yeah. are now pissed off, you know what I mean? I seen a great painting yesterday that subset done in town. They done a picture of like it's the police but they have the body mm. clavers on yeah, and they have the yeah. machine guns and they are here and they have kids up in the windows painted and like different scenarios and stuff mm. like that and like we are we are in a time now we think we're again maybe we need to stand up as people against what you're going on so flying all the way back is what you were saying on we battled and we failed mm. the amount mm. of times that the irish failed or fled and did that as well but the one thing about us is we always we always stayed that, yeah. that that film uh, Black Twenty Seven that's still coming down. Yeah, there's actually now it's a mad yoke. It's like bleeding Rambo in the famine. It's a great example of what you're saying yeah. there. That when people went away and fought for like the the, the British coin or the mm. the, 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 mm. the king's crown, the king's coin or something, yeah. they used to say, yeah. they they didn't know Prince they were crown, yeah. they didn't mm. know. And and as they came back, um, I think that's when Irish started to realise that hold on, the, the the British in this situation are not our friends. Yeah. They were taking the houses on. It's a great example, actually, that mm. film uh, of showing it. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, I think that's where it brings that that mighty myth was as well. But I think it comes from our childhood. So yeah. say go back to the back to Bally Moon because mm. I know growing up in Jobs Town and as a kid, man, people would be like, if you put it on paper, people would be like, "Jay's your poor thing," and I'd be like, yeah. "I loved it. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. loved it. It was a concrete jungle and yeah. it was mental. That was yeah. fields and trees and yeah. you know what I mean. Older kids and older kids and younger kids and it was just like uh, as you were saying there, then you. I, I would have recognised guys like yourself that would have that brother would have been like fuck off away yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah like for me Ballymun like uh, I, I'd, be the, I'd be the exact same buddy. Uh, Ballymun was uh, it shaped me to who I am today I think it comes from the, the kind of the this consumer culture we're in that we're, we're kind of constantly being told to be more make more buy more and you're constantly you know bombarded on you know social media of you have to look like this dude and you have to have this money and, you, and this kid sold him an app for two billion dollars today and you're constantly striving for that so when you grow up in an area in the likes of Jobstown and Ballymun you're constantly seen as a failure you mm. feel like you're a failure yeah, because awesome. you're not the exceptional uh, the exceptional kind of breed of what this this culture is trying to possess on, on, on us and I think that's the important thing is to, is to realise that you know, you know the saying is that you sleep in the same bed no matter where you are once yeah. you've a roof over your head you're in the bed like so it doesn't matter if you have 10 bedrooms or one you're there like you know so um but i think it's the perception of our culture that makes us think geez growing up in jobstown is terrible isn't it yeah. no it's not <laughs> it's terrible to you because you have different uh, ideologies of what it's like to live and what your values are in life so for me i'm the exact same i loved ballymun I didn't have to call my mates to kick a ball. I kicked her off the flats. So yeah. I kicked her over the flats. It made me be a footballer. I am. Um, You're trying to kick a ball over the flats. Yeah, it's yeah. Mental, so you go so, from that and kicking that in all over the finals. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So for me, um, uh, I think the big thing in life, Paddy, is to is to make our young people realise that you know uh, life is all about failure. Uh, it's all about pain. And if you can, if you can, it's going to be there in your life. And if you can embrace it. Yeah. And, and and like for a fight, you have to go through pain and torture yeah. so that when you get into the cage, that that's easy for you. Let the elements of your yeah. body actually give you that. Like yeah. I feel like you earn the feeling to be mm. like, yeah, you own this. Like, yeah. If you step on that field and you're not ready, you know it. Yeah. And and the, the big thing is like for mental health nowadays, if you can understand that when you have negative thoughts or you have adversity around you, that that's that's your armory. That's your weapons. Use that weapon to give you an opportunity, and to push yourself forward. Like you have. Like you came from Jobstown. You became a, a hero to your to, for your local community and the wider Dublin community, and in fact the country 
you know, with the the lads that yourself, Carl, mm. um, who else Owen. was there? Owen, you had Ash, you know, all these lads have set Chris the Fields foundation. Well. Chris Fields, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chris Fields, yeah. So, so you've you've laid the foundations, and it's been said loads of times. You've laid the foundations for the next generation. And that's what we're doing in Gaelic football. Yeah. You know, we're just, the, the people before us that have failed, that have not won all Ireland, have given us the success, to, the anger and the pain to go, well, we want Dublin to be successful. Yeah. And that's when we, you know, we go out and we try embrace the communities that we're from. Definitely. Do you, um, do you feel that a lot of this divide between communities, like, so say, like, the, I, say Temple Oak is seven minutes from Jobstown on the maps like do you get what I mean yeah. but the difference in the gaffes are probably about 300 grand Yeah. and if I said to somebody like if I said to somebody from Temple Oak so you only live seven minutes from Jobstown and she no I do not <laughs> that's what they say now yeah. the, the, the idea is that that'd be like me trying to the, the reaction to me feels like that person feels like I'm trying to take something away from them mm. something that they don't even have mm. do you know what I mean and if someone said to me like you live seven minutes from Temple Oak we'd be like I couldn't give a fuck do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a different reaction to it where I feel like if you feel like you, you know, you, you're, I'm not picking on Temple Oak here <laughs> but you're better than thing. The only people that that, that benefits is is the government. Yeah. Because it, it's that social devoid again that, that's there. Rather than all of us turning around and people realising people from Temple Oak people from Racker people from all of these places they're getting fucked just as much as the people mm. up the road. Whether, whether if I'm losing 10 grand because of it and they're losing 50, 10 grand to me is just like like 50 to them. Or, yeah. You know what I mean? So I think the divide between the situations is if you it's seen as, yeah, well, I'm not, there has to be somewhere as, like, well, I'm not as bad as them. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Now, yeah. Growing up as a kid, I knew that, like, man, I knew coming from Jobstown that, like, the, the idea of, now maybe if, <laughs> if we seen me myself, I'd be like, oh, watch this fella. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Wild red hair, tracksuit, <laughs> Air Max, does the vroom, full of yeah, energy. Yeah. And, and probably like yourself, that's yeah. the like the housing estate uniform, isn't it? Like when you're doing. And and people are, are weary of that in, yeah. the, in the situation where I oh, remember that was a youth and, and uh, sorry, um, an old man at the top of a road named Stephen. And we used to like lift his. I was only I was digging a garden yesterday. and I was thinking of it. Jesus, and he's dead now. Mm. And we used to lift it, like run down the end of the road, grab his bags, lift him up the end of the road, and he trusts you and stuff like that. But other people would be wouldn't yeah. trust you. Yeah, he used to trust us, and we used to like the idea that he trusted us to be able to carry his bags from the end of the road all the way around the corner where he couldn't see us yeah. and leave them in his porch for him. Now. And some of the young fellas that would have done that as well are, are maniacs now. Yeah. And, and I'm not, I don't mean maniacs, what I mean, like, but just stay wild, yeah, you know? Yeah. Well, for me, like, I, uh, I, I'm no different. Uh, there is, it, it, there's a strange divide in the middle class, the social middle class. There's a strange divide. Like, uh, for example, I live in, I obviously grew up in a, an area called Salog in Ballymont, um, and Glass Nevin is the next our neighbour it's the community beside it it's and a great graveyard there was a, that, yeah and there was a yeah. no no it's mad I <laughs> love a graveyard <laughs> it's a weird about graveyard but some peace in there right so, so this <laughs> right, moving on the graveyard death the wall there was a wall dividing the two communities like we, it was like the, some people used to call the Berlin wall some used to call the, the Poshy wall and there was a wall like, cha like and and we could never grasp how the kids over the wall spoke differently right and the kids over the wall used to get over the wall to buy drugs in Ballymun. And so we couldn't find, we were kind of like, you know, what's the difference? Like, you know, but the problem is, um, like we used to actually, funnily enough, we used to get over the wall on Halloween and think they had better sweets than us. <laughs> Same sweets, like, but we were convinced no. that they had better sweets. So for me, um, the big problem we have now in the, the, that middle divide, the middle class is that, first of all, if we had 10,000 euro there and we gave it to somebody in a lower class, that would go a long way for them. 100%. When you get to middle class, 10,000 euro doesn't really matter, yeah. right? So it depends on the values of someone's life then at that stage. <laughs> the middle class is the is probably the, the hardest class at the minute. Obviously, you know, different resources than, than lower class. And then, but the problem is, life is all about problems. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you do in life, it's a problem solving issue. Yeah. And you, you close the door to one problem, you have the solution for that, you open the door for another. So we get to understand that life is all about problems. And the, the funny thing is, we're all wrong. Some are more wrong than others. Think about it, 100 years ago, yeah. we're laughing at the way people lived. 
What are people going to be laughing about in a hundred years' time about us? Well, the people are going backwards though, really. Like, the world was yeah. flat a hundred years, like back yeah. in the day. Yeah. And now it's round, we found that out. Now it's yeah. going flat again. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yeah but, <laughs> but you know, you'd have people, uh, you'll have people laughing at us in a hundred years' time saying, geez, people back then, that millennium type area, they used to, they let their jobs uh, make them unhappy. They couldn't, they had the, the most connective generation through technology yet yeah, they couldn't even speak to each other they're so they got all these issues because um because of, because of that they have mental health issues jesus they were mad back then so we're all wrong yeah. right we're going to be wrong all the policies that we developed in, in as a government are like they're changing there's two that have just changed this year so the people that created them are wrong because now they're changed Right, so we are in a constant environment, and and I would I would have come across if I thinks he's always right, but I've kind of learned to go. Do you know what? I'm always wrong, so we just don't know how wrong and, and who who's going. But the big problem, Paddy, is that everybody, um, we live negative lifestyles, right? Because of the perception of what we should be living. Nobody can be exceptional at, at all aspects of life. You're exceptional at MMA because you put time and you're grafted in it, right? Yeah. Nobody ever is exceptional at everything. No. So we're, so that means we're all average. Yeah, we're average it's at life. Talent that they say you know? people say, isn't it? That they use the word. Yeah, like so when we sit at home, we're average people, you know, and we're we're kind of we're making a tea, we're making a, whatever. That's average, and it's okay to be that way. Yeah, we just think that we have to be something else. We have to be exceptional at all the things because of what we're being brainwashed into thinking. We want people to feel bad. We want people to feel. Shit, because we feel shit. Because we feel shit. Yeah. We talk about the grudgery nation of the Irish. You know, <coughs> you know Connor. Connor does really well. Go on, Connor. And then all of a sudden, he gets he gets to the stage where you're like, oh fuck, I don't, I don't want to win anymore. He's fucking doing me head in. That's, that's the Irish. But it's a grudgery, like you know. Instead of just going, as you said, <coughs> I just want to see people doing well. Why not? Oh, What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Like, I, I it's literally, and um, like, I probably learned that from Connor as well as you yeah. like. like you can't be. You have to be happy for somebody. If you are, if you if you can't be happy for somebody doing well, like there's something wrong with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And some people might see it as like jumping on bandwagons and all as well because like, oh, I'm just happy when people are doing well. You know what I mean? It's people a value. Yeah. Really well. It's a good value, and and you've got that from somebody, buddy. Like you know, I'm training Max Lally now. Max, a and kid. what a kid! Like what a, kid. I look at him and I'm saying to myself, right, two really good parents, Yvonne and John. I can see the values from them that he's got. I can see the values he's got from John Cavanagh and the other trainers in SBG. I can see what he's learned from the other lads, the likes of yourself and all the other lads that have fought in UFC. He's miles ahead. Like I'm looking at him saying, because I've trained soccer lads and soccer lads, unfortunately, when they get to an age uh, where money comes into they become professional athletes, their attitude changes. Well, I know. I have a cousin you know? like that. That's what happened. It happens all the time. And I always say to the, to the soccer lads, you need to have a, a, a GAA attitude. Yes. Max Lally has like an attitude I haven't seen, like, but it's from his values, yeah. right? We all have good and bad values. So what you're saying is is no different. It's it's, it's who you've you've gained that from somebody. You know? But you know what I've gained that from? I've gained that from jujitsu and from mm. grappling and from constant, constant daily conflict uh, where the y- your body is panicking in a way in jujitsu. Like you don't even know it yeah. at the start that. You're dying, you know, mm. like uh, like w- every moment that you roll, your body doesn't know that like we were at the walking into a building here and it's calm and it's cool. It rips all them thoughts back, it blocks that down, and now it's like, what are you doing? We're yeah. under pressure. What he's trying to kill us? He's trying to strangle us. Yeah. And after a little while, that piece, that that feeling just comes numb. Yeah. Your brain's kind of like, do you know what? I'm just pissed off telling you that you're dying here. Yeah. And stuff like that, and you just become this. No, right, right. I think you become numb to it, and what it does is it creates another part where you want to extend that, and then you want to make it like stand up wrestling, and you want to find that buzz in different areas right. of it. Whether it's some people stay with jujitsu, and that's just enough for them. Yeah. To me, I need to be wrestling on my feet. I need to be wrestling against the wall. Then sometimes I need to put gloves on and yeah. hit someone, and they hit me, and, and 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 I think that's the excel of it. But it's like it's like a cabinet. You can take what you want out of it. Where me, I'm always that person. Like, I want it all. I want to try yeah, everything in the yeah. end. You get what I mean? But some people are like, and, and um, I, I posted a video yesterday from Russell Brand talking about jujitsu, and I can't help it enough, but and I can't eradicate enough that jujitsu was not just for athletes, and it's not just mm. for training guys. It's it's like coming here and doing yoga 
But there's a mindfulness aspect to it. It's a yeah, huge yeah. mindfulness, and the aspect of of the growth out of it is incredible. Mm. Because in most people, and th and this is what I find with gyms as well, and my gym's definitely not like that. It's like the idea of like like if you're going to do jiu jitsu, you have to be a world champion. Like if you like, say we bring it to GAA, you see all the summer camps, and you say, and I see because my youngfella, my youngfella left football, and yeah. and and I'm so proud I was for him. He left <laughs> and went to do GAA. So Very good. Look at that football. Fair play. There's no need to wait. Everyone moans. That one's like, in the sport, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's uh, but he's like he does jiu-jitsu as well, but he's like everyone moans a football party, you look, and it's uh, uh, that, and it's like yeah. I'm the only pass to the best player, and and he keeps glory, and, and he's a goalkeeper, so he could transfer whatever. Yeah. But then he went to the the the, the guy. To see what he's doing in the guy as a youth player, like you're not looking at all of these guys every time you go train, say, a kids club or something yeah. like that, and be like, right, he's not all going to win in all the world, and that's the only reason we were yeah, doing this. Yeah. You, you're throwing him up and saying, there's a good <coughs> chance not all of these can win in all the world, <coughs> maybe one or two of these, it would be percentage, but the reason why we're here is because of the growth and because of the goodness and because of all of the stuff that comes through this and the idea of missing a point and then practising and getting it again. Yeah. Like, I know more you hopefully that's, that's where... I'm about to get rid of his kind of competitiveness and it's yeah. the only time he's starting to come on now. Even in jiu-jitsu, right. he's starting to get better now because he's fiercely competitive. Like one time he's seen on a piece of paper, we were going for a run or something like that and it said race on it instead of run. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> and the fact <laughs> where, because he kind of has the mentality is that like yeah. kids have this from, from computer games or whatever yeah, it is, yeah. but don't do it if you're not going to be number one or the champ or like if, if it's Fortnite or something like that. It's yeah. so like, He's like, he like, only came 10th. And I'm like, how many people are there? And he's like, 100. But that's all right. He's like, no, that wasn't. They they only compete if they feel like they're going to be like the greatest ever. Yeah. If you're the goal. Well, I, I think that's very important value uh, as a kid because life for me, we strive for positivity. We strive for being happy all the time. But it's not really. Life should be about improvement. So if a kid says, I think the understanding there is like, you know, I'm tenth in that game. Right, well, try to get ninth the next day. You yeah, know? so yeah, that yeah. that stuff is really good to have as a kid, like you know. Yeah. But uh, I would have had kids that had to train in my gym and they would have like been struggling with anxiety because they were leaving here to come up and stuff like that. And I'm just like, listen, it's not the end of the world, like you know. So we got to again, it's learning them up with, with the uh, how they feel when they're kids and uh, learning them up with them values of you know it's all right life's grand you know what I mean it's you're gonna have pain you're gonna suffer just get out like you know it's you'll deal with it you know? and I think if you do that and you don't worry about it um, yeah. it's, I think I've said this already but here's a, here's a little theory on where anxiety comes from yeah the the idea of your fire when you were a caveman that that fire going out and when you went to get wood the thinking and you're taking over in your body of something that's not there yeah. but it stresses on you I, the only reason I kind of figured that was because I was watching that naked maroon or something like, like <laughs> I, I was just thinking I can imagine the guy's going on about the fire like I better get back for the fire but I can imagine that that's where yeah. the feeling comes from as a caveman because you don't just have yeah. a lighter or a box of matches you know what I mean you have to think about that and I think now the body as you said like the people are going to be looking back in a hundred years and maybe the, his anxiety will be figured and all of this stuff will be like without pills obviously because yeah. that doesn't work either like, <laughs> so, some people it does some people it doesn't I don't think I think, but I think if you if you put the long game in, you, you get better. Mm. You fully figure out what it is. Yeah, that's what we always say yeah. to the kids about the anxiety. Yeah. That's that's a chemical that doesn't even belong in your body anymore. Yeah, it's like the, the big thing is it's uh, you know we're constantly in an environment that we're looking for high fixes all the time, short term yeah. high fixes, uh, and we we can't. Like, I, I'm big into this value thing, like you know, and you'll hear me saying it already a few times, but. Um, some values like entitlement and trying to be the best all the time sometimes is not a good thing it's not good because uh, for example if you go to a disco and you want to be the best looking kid in the disco and you arrive there and you can't that's not reality because you, you like how you measure that what your metric is around that you don't control Yeah. because you don't know who first of all is going to be there you show up and you're on your own you've failed so you can't be the best looking because there's nobody else there or maybe you can yeah, that's, but, that's the only reason I'm the best looking or if kids are there you just can't predict their, t their thoughts so there's values that you think are good but sometimes they're actually negative like you know so it's uh, it's for me it's I, I'm very intrigued about uh, the whole kind of mental health thing because it's massive nowadays and, and I think um, it's something certainly that's destroying generations and, and it's impacting hugely in communities like but the big problem about I feel about anxiety is we give a fuck about too much 
Yeah. You know, we go on this cycle <laughs> where when you're a baby, right, and you, you pick up a bottle and there's a certain colour and the baby will go, oh, I don't want its colour or whatever it is. Your kids care about a lot when they're younger. Yeah. And that changes as you get older and you get to a stage where maturity comes into play and you say, well, that doesn't really mean, or it doesn't give me value in my life, so I don't really care about that. But we're actually going now the opposite way now. We're going around like kids where we care about too much and that's when we build up the anxiety. Yeah. We're caring about what people think of us. We're caring about what we have. And... And, and I think we only have a certain amount of fucks to give in life. <laughs> Make sure they're ones that are important to you, right? And have them in your armory, have them there for your backup. Because um, if you keep worrying about the other things, the other fucks that don't matter, life can be shit, like. Do you ever get a time in life, and I know you haven't, we'll go into this now, the idea of when you realise that all of that stuff actually means fucking nothing. Mm. When something happens, and, 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 and all of a sudden you're like, Everything that I was even worrying about, or, or it just doesn't matter, you know what I mean? As yeah. you were saying, they, like you said, uh, your, <coughs> brother John, your brother John went there, uh, went down a different path to yourself. Mm. So, and and I kind of we could we could relate with you there in the idea of like I, I know people that are close to me that I went right and they went left, mm. and and we both have we both know that we could have could have been either way. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, yeah. I know for me, it definitely could have been either way. You know, yeah. it, it just times in my life I don't know why sometimes in my head that was like. Like, no, I was, I was strong at that time when I needed to be. And, and that was like, when you look back, you're like, shit, that could have been a mad, crazy turn in your yeah. life that changed everything. I'm reminded of that every week. I go into Mount Joy and I'm sitting in front of my mates. Yeah. Five of my mates locked up in Mount Joy, like, you know. I um, did that as well in yeah, Winfield. Yeah, I'm sitting so. there and I've got mates in the room and we live on the same road and we drink the same water, but... Mm. I mean, here giving a lifestyle talk and same as you. You made the right choices. That's all. That's what it's, it comes down to. Like you know, is um, that what it is? Is it? Well, I feel it is. It's look is it again. Lucky or is it? This, no, this no, I don't think. It, I don't think it does that. got to do it. Look, <coughs> like, here's the way I put it. I, I actually don't gamble. I haven't a clue about gambling. I wouldn't even know how to bet on a horse. But I think life is very similar to a game of poker. Right, game of poker. People talk about luck. Right. It's not really like I could have a I, I could have a you could have a better hand than me and I can still beat you. Yeah. Because of the choice I made. Yeah. So if I bluffed you, whatever else. So that's what life's like. Everybody's not gonna be dealt a good hand. But it's the choice you make with your hand that makes a difference. Right? So if the the lads that are in, in, in Mount Joy that are my friends, they ultimately just went down the wrong pathway and made the wrong choices over and over and over again, which ultimately led to where they are now today. Yeah. I make, we make, the, the big thing is, remember I was saying everybody's wrong, just some people are more wrong than others. That's the same with choices. Some people make bad choices, but some people make really bad choices. Yeah. And that's when they end up impacting their lives. So that's why they're, they're in prison and ultimately they've made a choice. Like that's all it comes down yeah. to, saying, do you know what? Do I do this or not? And if you do, And if you kind of went down way. that road, like it's like, it's kind of like, it was starting off at like a clean slate and it went bad and then it went mm. bad and it went bad. And sometimes it goes so far that it's like, oh, I did, it's hard to get how, how do I get back? Do you know what I mean? And then it turns into, as you're saying, like it turns into stuff like, like your neighborhood was, was infected badly by, by, by heroin back mm. in the day. And like, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a known fact. And, and a lot yeah. of the places in Dublin were thinking with it. And as then bad choices go, 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 go. You, you can see how it's easy for people to get lost in the bliss of, of drugs and the idea of like just worrying about drugs and all like they don't have to think about like bills or clothes or looking well or aren't or social uh, placing or aren't like that they kind yeah. of they break them down so much that they f they re they just end up in a place where it's like you know what okay, I'm just worrying about this. It, 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 look, you, you said a few minutes ago that you know all the social classes everybody's being fucked in some way like yeah. you know like the, the big thing is like uh, as a country there's two things we need. Love, and I know that's a fluffy thing, no, and it's like man, love, love is 100%. and protection. As as a country, that's all you need: protection and love, right? And everything falls into that category, like housing and you know the laws and everything. Yeah. But unfortunately, um, we've been so disconnected to the to. I don't want to get into a huge amount of politics, but you look at Ballymun, for example. Ballymun was the was the the uh, the solution to a problem of overcrowded tenements in the inner city. Yeah. It was the bridge between the airport and town and inner city. They built this massive complex in a small condensed area and the drug dealers went, whoa, this is a huge it's opportunity. Easy. I don't have to go five miles to sell drugs. I can do it in a, in a place where they're all condensed. There are people maybe a little bit uneducated about drugs. Let's make money, right? Yeah. That hasn't changed. No. Not one bit. They knocked the flats down. 
there's no amenities there. There's no option. Right, here's your option as a young kid in Ballymun. You're under 18. There's a bag. I'll give you a grant. Let's say less. I'll give you 400 euro to walk across that road and give that to that guy there. Right? Or you can go and go up to that youth club up there that's poorly funded and... Um, you know, do a few games and whatever else and stay busy and, yeah, you can do that. Which would you choose? Oh no, it's and here's the thing, here's the selling point for the drug dealer. You won't be incriminated for that if you get caught by the guards. You'll be sent to Albertstown because you're dealt, under 18 is a dealt with the healthcare system and not the men, not the, the criminal system. Yeah. So it's grand, you won't, be, you won't get into trouble even if you get caught. So they're the options that this country has given uh, given our youth uh, so it's so easy like there's, there's, there's so many kids in all communities in this country that are being groomed like that in Ballymun it, it was a heroin in the 80s and, and early 90s now it's now it's crack cocaine it's crack cocaine and so crack. We, Paddy, crack is it's huge and we have a policy that doesn't support any of the, the people of this country it's a stigmatised pr- policy of people going if you're a drug addict you're a scumbag you're a junkie Stay on the streets. Yeah. We're not letting you come back in to get a job or to come off drugs. That's the way it is right now. You're incriminated. You're you, if you're caught with personal use, you're sent to prison. And they're not looking at this. That guy sh- could be have some sort of men, uh, mental health issue from yeah. a very young age. Eighty percent of addicts have had childhood mental health issues. So drug is the, is the bond. The drug is the thing that gets out of the pain. That's the bliss. That's I said. Yeah. Really, they, everything else just doesn't love them as much as drugs loves mm. them. Like, yeah. I know a lad, like, and I had him on the show, he's fucking sound, and he tell you, and he would, he's, mm. like, he's just one of these guys that he's straight up, you know what I mean? Yeah. He said, man, heroin is the best feeling in the world. Yeah. That's what yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like, uh, it can't, like, he hates it so much, it's ruined, it ruined parts of his life, somewhere, and he's got his life to get a big time, yeah. he's a good man. But he's, he's now, he's like, he'd still tell you, oh no, that was definitely the best feeling in the world. Now, I don't be saying he helped promote uh, heroin or that, but the, the idea was, I used to live in Canada, right? I stayed in Canada for a good while. And I seen crack cocaine out there, and this was probably, I mean, hopefully it was probably about nine years ago, right? And there was a, there's, a, there's a street called Hastings. And they turned down, they, they, the mental health um, thing ran out, the money, the funding did, in a, in a hospital on the street called Hastings. So they cleared the hospital out onto the street. So these people literally had to go onto the street. And the same idea, the drug dealer seen this as an opportunity. And they went down and they gave all of these people that were bad mental health. <laughs> Crack, right? You come through this bus in the place and, and through the bus, or through a bus, and I'm not messing. It's, there's, there's guys with trolleys that are clucking. There's guys sitting smoking crack on the side of the street. Now, I'm not giving a bad rap for Canada. It's just mm. this street. And anybody that's from Canada and I say Hastings, they'll know what I'm on about. Now, I used to kind of go through that route on the bus. I didn't have to. And I didn't know why, but I used to be real, not fascinated with it, but I just, I was captivated. Like I was, and then I remember thinking to myself, if this gets to Dublin, hmm. everybody's fucked. Yeah. Because I just know the way they, you know, like, it's like, I don't know whether it's like, it's like drug addicts sometimes are, are, are really dedicated. You can see some of the work that they put in. You mentioned the government there in the way of like, um, the, the problems that are coming down the hill. They're kind of like, they're kind of like people in any way now the government is where you know the problems that are starting to happen with the government with the homelessness with, with crisis and now we're crack coming in on top of it yeah. and all of this they're now turning into the the, 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 the the person or if you look at the per, the government as a person as the oh, there's too many problems going on at one yeah. time now and they're backed up if you, if you if you go back to looking at like say Bally Moon the idea of people spreading drugs the way they are like that I find that I, 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 and I've said this to TDs and, and friends that are ministering me, the idea of, like, say, releasing or legalising um, marijuana, mm. right? Like, weed, you know what I mean? Sound like some hippie American there, mm-hmm. like marijuana. Yeah. Weed. Joe because, Rogan, now you're coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> the idea is, I feel that, because they learn, kids learn an apprenticeship of, of weed. Like, <laughs> you just have to look at it and you'll just see it running everywhere. Mm. And, they, as you said... Most it, heroin addicts, that's where it starts. And, and the thing is, there's no consequences for weed at that time. Now, mm. I don't know if someone wakes up and says to themselves, Roy, I'm going to take the risk of start selling crack cocaine today. Yeah. And I think if you do and you get caught, it, it's a it's a lot more of a, a penalty now. They, they're bringing in a law. To, I always give the government props when they do something mm. good. Called Fagan's Law. Really? Did you hear that? No. It's called Fagan's Law. So it's a law that if they can prove that you are using somebody under 18 or a youth, 
to um to to sell drugs or uh, distribute drugs that you can be charged for that Ooh. crime. Brilliant, and that's yeah. a great great name yeah. as well. Look, yeah. Oliver Twist, Fagan's yeah. Law. Fagan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. a brilliant way of looking yeah. at it. But yeah. I think, as I said, there's a, there's a lot of things that can be done where if if people look and sit down with a pencil and look at the fucking ideas, mm. they can be it, there'll be a lot fixed. Yeah, I, well, I think look, you've said that there's a, there's a lot of problems that the government have to deal with. That's what politics are for. If there was <laughs> no problems, you wouldn't have any politics. Yeah. Um, and that's what I think people need to realise that um, you know. Whenever ever ever there's an issue, politics fall, politics. Look it. They that's what they're there to do. They're there to make this country better through problems, through solving problems. <laughs> we are we are, in the best way possible. Yeah, we're we're hiring see see people the society doesn't realise we're hiring we're trying to hire people the best problem solvers in the country. That's what we're trying to hire. Yeah. Um in each department of the country. But you gotta you gotta look at the massive problem that we have at the minute first like if we don't have a policy well first of all they're all interlinked right the three that I've mentioned are all interlinked if you have a kid with mental health who has been brought up in a culture that it's a consumer type culture they have to be better than everybody else they're going to have mental health issues yeah or you might have like if you look at the the problems that we had years ago with with, uh, with the Catholic Church and the people getting molested that that has had a knock on effect of the addiction problems in this country Ooh, right so yeah. that's what happened back then yeah. now it's mental health with with um with, with, with well, homelessness the world that, like that, yeah, that well. we were living in but kids living in hotels and stuff like that now is, is as much as an abuse as you were saying as well, well we're starting again the pro we're depriving the rights of <coughs> what, what people in this country should be granted like you know so for me mental health turns into a drug addiction because again as we said that's the fix that's the that gets rid of the pain what happens when you become a, a, a really bad heroin addict? Eventually you rob your, your family home yeah. to feed your habit and you're on the streets. So you've had the three all, you've went through the whole cycle where your your mental health, you have a mental health issue at a young age, you then become an addict and then you become homeless. Right? So that's it's a it's a complete cycle like. So for me, first of all, we need to break the cycle um of the of the mental health issue. Like um we need to train our kids to think in that as I said to you, the pain and suffering is a part of the biology of who we are as, as a human being. That physical pain is no different to psychological pain. If a kid comes in here and bangs his head, he's not going to do it again. So it's a, it's a, it's a limitation. Pain is a limitation, yeah. right? So you get a box in in the in the yes. ring in the octagon. You're not going to get a box. That you're going to move the move, next time. Yeah. You're going to realize the way you got me that the last time. And it's the same as psychological pain. You get psychological pain and you get emotions. Negative emotions are feedback, and they're saying. Well, you feel shit today for some sort of reason. There's a problem there. Solve it. If you get positive emotions, that's a reward. Yeah. Right? So that's where I feel it starts. And then addiction, we need to change the policy. I'm not too sure about legalising drugs, but I do certainly think that decriminalising the drugs is the first step. Because you look at Portugal, 340-odd deaths we've had in this country. Portugal had 14 last year. So we're, they're doing something right. But they're, it's and is Portugal uh, decriminalised? Decriminalised. They were the first to do it in 2001. So and what does the de de decriminalise mean compared to um You're decriminalising it says decriminalising drugs, but you're decriminalising the human being, right? So you're saying you've got an issue, right? right. And I'm not gonna punish you for it. I'm gonna help you through the healthcare system. So instead of you so this country spending ninety thousand euro on you being a Mount Joy for a year, we're gonna put that money into getting you through a rehab. Is that what program. It is for a per, yeah, for a year, yeah, in Mount Joy. Per per ninety to hundred thousand a but year. Look, we don't even spend that on the outside. That's, well, that's to see a, a drug addict will spend about twenty, thirty thousand euro on tr maybe two to three hits a day of heroin. So and you have to remember they're unemployed and they're homeless, so they have to commit crime. Yeah. So if you take that element out of it, that they de criminal. So if you're caught with personal use, you're sent to a dissuasion committee, which right. basically sits in front of a doctor, the chairperson, and maybe a psychiatrist, and they say, right, you're going to pay a fine. Right, because you took the stigma off. The, they're off. You're off the street now because you took. The, it's not. You're not going to go to prison. Yeah. You're not going to be homeless, right? And you basically say, right. How's your life now? Is it chaotic? Have you got a chaotic drug addiction? And you say, yeah, I have. Right. There's a fine. I want you now to go off. I'm going to refer you to go off and do a problem. That's your choice. If you want to keep doing what you're doing, that's up to you, right? Because ultimately, we can have all the policy we want, Pally. What matters is that the what it comes down to, what it boils down to, is the person wants to come off the drug. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's how it happens. <laughs> People, I spoke to thousands of addicts and I've asked, I always ask the question, how would you do it? They'll always say, I hit rock bottom. That's, that's ultimately what happens. Yeah. And that's the choice they made. So for me, policies are very important. We need to keep them on the planet long enough to be able to make that choice. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't because they're living on the streets and we're not let, giving them a way to reintegrate into society. And it can't happen. And, and that's the thing. There's another stigma, as we said, in between. It, it, and it suits, it suits governments in a way. If we look at like everybody that's homeless is a drug addict or everybody that's mm. homeless is an alcoholic, where... There's, as you said, the the, the actual the, the worst problems are in the middle class now because in the lower classes you say like it's like yeah well fund them and be seen to fund them and give them what they need mm. but then the middle class guys you've got guys that are going out walking nine to five his missus is going out walking nine to five they have three kids and if the landlord decides to hell, sell the house they're homeless tomorrow yeah it's much easier to to well for me it's um it's probably more viable to buy a house nowadays than rent Whoa, no. which is crazy to think what? and, and the thing is and then buying and, and do you know what I think they forced that hand into that situation it's mm. like you don't want to be renting houses because you're wasting your money but you know what we'll give you 350 grand to buy a gaff that's worth 200 yeah, grand yeah. and you can pay the rest of your yeah. life giving us that <laughs> yeah. back don't worry about that mate yeah. and if you turn that down it'd be like well you're not fault you're homeless now because you turn that down it's like hold on but like we're making decisions on fucking living here like it, last year they spent I think it was 45 million they spent on hotels and uh, accommodation for homeless people 45 million alright how many got like they could have solved a lot of the problem that's still there with, and we still owe for it it's like it's like the government is renting places do you get what I mean like yeah. if we go and rent a house it's going to cost me like what 1500 euro a month two, gra two grand a month and yeah. then we're like and at the end of the year oh you still have that problem you think as the government they would have fucking seen that but you're in a vicious cycle so you never get out of that's the big problem you never get out of so how do you get how do you get out of well you buy a house so you don't have to keep renting well how do you buy a house when you can't afford to even save so I'm very lucky I, I lived uh, <coughs> with my parents and my dad's apartment and, and um, I was able to save with my girlfriend like right now I would say um like I wouldn't have, the way that the market has gone. If I had <coughs> if I had an opportunity to buy my house now, it's gone up that much. I wouldn't be able to buy. I wouldn't be able to afford it. Like, and you've won you know? six all Ireland. You <laughs> know what I mean? That, yeah. th that's that's bullshit. That means that there's a problem. If you were in America, right, and you had won six college championships, yeah. that would be the equivalent of that. You'd be a rich man. Yeah. You'd be some linebacker or something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? And life would be all good. Yeah. Which is a mad situation because, yeah. like. I can't see, like, what has bleeding, like, Leo Vrad got done? Well, like, what, where's his all Ireland's? But I guarantee he owns his gaff. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the sad thing about it, like. Yeah. You, you see these guys that it's like, that they're like, yeah, the country's in crisis. Yeah, we're in crisis. Because mm. we know that you're not in crisis. You're going back mm. to your, your, your granite kitchen and your beautiful... Yeah. And I don't, I don't, I just said that, I don't begrudge that either. Yeah, yeah. But, they're, like, the people are going around about this 14 billion being uh, like given to us by Apple. Apple, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, and you do see like, the dogs giving it back and all. Now, we yeah. do understand because you understand the predicament of that as well. If they, yeah. if they give back, if they take accept the 14 billion. Well, they have million, to take some of it back now, and anyway, we, from the EU, I've said they have to take it back. They have to take some of it back. Yeah. But, but the idea is that that opens the, the it can close that tax haven, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, it means that the, the, the employment will probably take a hit, and that probably 14. Million would go somewhere else. Will go know, somewhere like, else, yeah, like, and yeah. that's the idea. Like, oh, there needs to be a bit of that. If that is coming into the country, that needs to be cut off, and it needs to be tapped right with me, isn't it? Yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's a nice it's storm. I like a bit of rain. Someone say the rain's not the rules. I love a bit of rain. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there needs to be that kind of uh, thing brought back into it. Look, at, we all want the country to be perfect, and we all want this country to be great. I think we have to accept it's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be great. I think what we'd what I'd like to see is a politician step up and say, "Listen, um, or, or a T shock, uh, look at." And, and and to be honest, I feel that Leo Varadkar has done a good bit um, in relation to the health of the country, um, the health care system maybe in, of the country of of the youth in terms of now he's made PE a, a subject in the leaving little things like that. That will impact mental health. That will oh, impact yeah. um, they've kids making better choices in yeah. terms of, and it will impact addiction. But for me, I just love somebody to step and go, do you know what? We don't have a perfect country, right? But 
these are the three things that are around this country, right? We, and as I said, they're going to be a solution for one problem and they're going to open the door for another. Let's get everybody housed, right? Yeah. Now, I'm going to, as a teacher, I'm going to say, I'm going to house everybody, right? But I want you to all be aware that there's going to be repercussions to that oh, when that happens. Yeah, yeah, watch. And we'll deal with it as a country. Yeah. But that honesty, I think, that transparency that the, uh, the political world has took a massive hit over the last 10, 15 years of trust for society. Like, So I think, um, look at the house forced kind of option. Get the, the, the 87,000, well, there's 10,000 people homeless, right? Here's a staff here. Every day in July, there was four families becoming homeless. Every day in July, for that month. There's four families becoming homeless, right? That is incredible stats, right? right? right. There's 31 properties vacant in Dublin alone. 80,000 nationwide, right? Get the people housed. Deal with their issues next. Have a coordinated uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, resourced effect to the, to the crisis that we have. Get them housed. Have resources in the communities and programs in the communities that will deal with the aftermath of the problems yeah, that they have for being homeless have. in the first yeah. place. No point housing somebody and they can't even put food on the table. Well, they don't know how to Have a coordinated yeah. you know, response to it. Um, we're just not seeing that. You have politics going, oh yeah, well we are, like we are trying, you know. Just be transparent. Get someone to say, listen, this is the problem. We know it's a problem. We're here, I'm a pot, you've voted me to try to solve this problem. And I can only solve this, but this is what we're doing, look at and it's like a company, you bring in someone like a managing director, and you say, right, I want you to get this company to that stage, give you your KPIs. If you don't get it, what happens? You lose your job. Yeah. Right? So, if you can't do that, if we can't see you constantly improving, it's the next person in. The problem we've had is, it's a cycle of pro of the, of the worst case scenario. Like, it's, someone comes in, still not working. Someone comes in, still not working. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. It'd be like a manager on a football team, it could be, you know what I mean? You, yeah. You could recognise that on a smaller scale. I could recognise mm. that on a smaller scale. If the player's not doing his job, take him off, He's put another sub on. And, I get the, you know? and do you know what it'd probably do? It'd probably make him want to do better. But the problem with this sub that comes on is he has to be better. Because yeah. if he's not, then you're you're caught with the and that's the political world all over. Put me back on. You know, yeah. you're like, well, yeah. he you didn't you didn't do as good as the other fellow I took off. So I'm gonna start him again the next day. I think we heard there's yeah. four hundred million worth of property in Dublin. Jeez, that is uh, incredible, isn't it? That's I don't even think it's owned by us, mm. and they're saying that they, they should confiscate. Like yeah. it's been sitting there for four and five years, derelict. Guys, just in like funds in a way. Let's put a few quid in and buy a gaff in Dublin because it's worth a fortune. And like, but the money's going to be right there. So we yeah. sell it whenever. I wouldn't be surprised if there was. Well, we all know there's a huge amount of vulture funds that came in from outside of Ireland. That seeing Ireland suffering in the economic uh, uh, phase we had there, and said. Buy up all this property, because oh, in five or ten years' time, I'm going to make a fortune on this. I'm come back. So that's that's the and that's business. Like and not gotta, only that, they're going to sell it. We won't even have to sell it to the people. We'll buy it off the government yeah. and we'll sell it back to them. Yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? Well, that's 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 what happened with Nama. Anybody people, that sat down with a bit of paper yeah. could see you. Right, well, there's this many people and there's this many houses. The supply and demand is going to fly back yeah. up in a little while. Anyone that has a little bit of a bit like a bit of a head, you know what I mean? And the population's increasing all the time, you know. So in any way, yeah. right. What's it like to walk out with a fucking Dublin jersey? <laughs> <laughs> Let, What's it like? Let's get into that. That had to be. That's this has because we. Yeah. That, that was a good conversation on, on that. But the, football. I want to. I want to feel this. Right, you know right, Because right, right. I can imagine now. Now, now I'm sh like, I'm probably all right. A guy. Good at football, but I wouldn't like. I wouldn't say I'd be able to walk out and play in front of people because like, I'd be missing the ball and all. <laughs> and shit would be going crazy. And well, look at like. You you would I, I'm sure you felt very similar walking out into the crowds you've walked out into the UFC, man, yeah. uh, especially the 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 one that you the headliner the and, yeah man, that yeah was, was, that, it was yeah. incredible scary uh, but it, like yeah like it's for me you know it's probably a cliche thing to say but it's it's a dream to come, it's a dream come true because you for me when I was a kid I remember driving over. I was on a bus with my mum when I was a kid. I remember driving over just at the Whitwood Road there, the, the bridge, and looking at Crow Park. And I said to me, I'm going to play there one day. And a couple of months later, I actually played there for my school for in the school old Crow thing. Park yeah. with the wooden benches and all. But for me, I was never like a, a massive GAA fan. I loved playing the sport. My dad used to bring me to games. He, was never, he wasn't a big GAA man himself, like, but I'd go to games. And I'd study the sport. like No difference to the way you use, use all very, yeah, very yeah. good studies or study... Uh, 
of the MMA game. Like for me, like I always, it wasn't one of the fellas in the hills shouting, "Come on, you boys in blue hat!" Like so, um, for me, you were <laughs> <laughs> so so. Look, okay, for me, <coughs> I'm at a point now, Paddy, in life where I realise that when I come onto the pitch, I am grateful for what I have. I'm so grateful that I've been given the opportunity to to walk onto Crow Park, to wear the blue jersey, to, to represent my community, my family, and to bring happiness to people's lives. That's just, that's a better feeling than actually getting the buzz of walking out with 87,000 people. I know what it represents. Yeah. And that's very important. It represents family days. Like, mm. On my young flight, the first day, this is a mad story, I bought two tickets for the All-Ireland final outside the pub. Lad said, <laughs> yeah, lad said to me like, Jez, Paddy, I wouldn't charge you. <laughs> and he, he gave me them face value and all. Right? I was like, this is, these are going to be bogey. Me and my young flight were heading First time we'd ever been at a match. Right. He goes to an All-Ireland final. Oh, I'm like, wow. Mate, it's not like this yeah. all the time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't want to set the bar too high. <laughs> but Damn. even that little moment there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'll remember that forever. He'll remember that forever and that's what people say to me about about Dublin and about the, the UFC they said yeah. like, like you lads give give us moments that they were family moments that were together the same way Paul McGrath and all gave us them moments yeah. in 94 and, and like Paul McGrath and all them guys like 94 or 1990 it was a long time ago yeah, but yeah. to me that was yesterday <laughs> do you know what I'm saying yeah. you see them we still bow down when I see the boys yeah, yeah. but they, they're that they were them people I think that even me and you different sport but we knew that there, there's a place in Irish folklore that you can catch on to. Yeah. And that's it, forever. Nobody can take that away from you. No, like, that's you know, it. that's incredible. Like, you know, you, you talk about um, to success, but like, when you go down in history, nobody can take it away from you. Like, you know, and that's something that you'd only, for me, I'd only kind of respect massively when I retire. Like, you know, I'm still focused on what I'm doing now. I'm yeah. still focused on getting as much as I can out of the game right now. But, uh, I'm sure it's look look for me it's I'll be saying Gaelic football is very strange you know it's it's very different to other sports um, you come you become a little bit of a forgotten person when you finish your career but that's okay like that's yeah, fine yeah yeah because <clears throat> we didn't get into the sport for money or, or fame we got into it because we loved it like that's you know it's a, it's a, it, we're amateurs like you know so for me it's um it's just it's just trying to embrace what I have now and try to get as much as I can. Be greedy. Yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. Get it, yeah. Like. So the idea of, like, as a lot of people, as we said, we'd have listeners in America, and, well, probably America, they would know, they know more about bleed GAA. Yeah, Muslim. all the American but, Irish. Yeah, the idea of, like, um, GAA is a massive sport. It's as big as, it's as big as, um, it'd be as big as basketball and stuff like that mm. in, 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 a national, in, sport, in a yeah, national yeah. sport. But, the guys don't get paid. The, mm. you, there's the, it's an amateur sport. It's kept amateur, which is good. I think that that keeps the kind of the rally into it. But it is hard. Like say for my own, my own young fella's playing guy now, and he's like, "I'm gonna do this," and I'm like, "I, I don't know what does he do. Like, wh where does his life go with this? I know you, you're a personal trainer. You're, you're successful at that as well. But like, some lads just have to get the the G. You know, have the ball, and, and outside that, it's like, like, what do you do? The best thing about GAA is that it's a, it's a, it's got a, a really good family orientated culture. Like, um, I had an argument with my mate one day. There was a group of lads that were playing soccer and for 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 a club in Ballymun and playing for my club Ballymun Kickums, and I and I said to him, they'd be better off playing with Ballymun Kickums. And he got tick about, it and I said, what do you mean? I said, well, like, look, no disrespect to the soccer world, um, but look at the guys that uh, they're aspiring to. And will they ever be able to achieve that? Nine times out of ten, probably not. Oh, yeah. It's no, it's no harm in them actually going and inspiring to that. Yeah. But I said, then look at the, the club that they're playing for, and look at the the senior team of that club. How many of them are unemployed? How many of them uh, have degrees? How many of them are teachers? How many of them are doctors? And I said, look at Ballymun Kickums. You've two doctors on that team. Every single player has a degree, right? Every single one of them are employed, right? So. There's, in GAA, there's a, it's a massive network. First community. Yeah, it's a, it is, yeah. <laughs> but you, you, you constantly support each other. You're mm. constantly backing each other up. Um, you, you have a belonging. You have a sense of belonging. Yes. Like SPG is to you. You have yeah. a sense of belonging. You're part of that family outside your own family. Uh, that's what the, the GAA has above everything else. So for me, GAA has given me a huge amount of things. Like for me, oh, let's let's look at the, my profession. I... Uh, when I was 17, I finished school. I wasn't very academic. I was, uh, Ballymun Kickums was a, was 
two communities in one. So we had kids in Ballymun, kids from Glasnevin playing with the one club. Kids from Ballymun would be like, ah, I just want to finish school. Kids from Glasnevin were like, I want to go to university. So that 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 kind of rubs off, rubs off yeah. on them, onto me. And I probably wasn't ready at that stage, so I wasn't an academic. Went on, kept the parents happy, went to, to Cross Sheedy, done a diploma, loved it. And I got to the age where I matured and I said, right, I'm going to go off and do a degree. Why? One of the main reasons is because I wanted to prove people that I could do it. It was when the chip on my shoulder a little bit. Okay. I wanted to... Well, without me leaving, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I think you fuck about it. Because yeah, yeah. I just wanted to be the first one to do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Like, you know, and that's... that that For me, that I know that has impacted a lot of people. I had a friend who went off and done it. He also went on to play for Dublin with me. He went off and done a degree. He went off and done a master's. Like, so... And I, I hope my nieces and nephews do the same thing. So, for me, um, that was the start of it. And I got to the stage where... I said, right, if I want to go back and do a degree, I have to repeat my leaving cert or else wait another two years to be a mature student. And I bought a car. I bought it. I was, you know, people from Ballymore, maybe from other areas, you, you do it backwards. You don't save for your, your college degree and then you get a career and you get your house to care after that. You buy this big car and you get <laughs> the bees and ears. So I had a big loan, couldn't sell it. Went to the parents and said, look, I'm going to go back and do a degree, but I can't sell this car. I lose so much money. He says, look, I will look after I didn't want to be over reliant on my parents put a roof over my head food on the, ta- food on the table that'd be grand I had two euro a day driving into St Plunkett's College uh, repeat me leaving cert with loads of students and I'm driving in an Audi A4 body kit everything kitted out and, and uh, they're probably saying to me either he's a teacher or he's a drug he's dealer a drug one dealer. or the other and I was living on two euro a day I'd buy uh, a long pan and a packet of ham and make me sandwiches for the week and I'd have a two euro for a drink of water for a bottle of water uh, and I was broke. And what happened then was, uh, I was because I was playing for Dublin under 21s at that stage, younger teams, I was starting to get a little bit of a profile. And a guy came to me from a, a GAA club and said, Will you train my team? And I paid a few quid. I was like, Lovely, 60 euro a week. This will be great. This will keep me going through school and, and, and uh, give me an f- extra few bob. So I started training him in, the, in my GAA club, Ballyman Kickers, in the attic space wasn't the gym, it was just an attic space. And I started training his team. And then as we were as as the weeks went on, we were the kids were coming in to train. A couple of parents noticed, what are you doing up there? I said, ah, I'm doing a doing a few uh, kids' classes and, and the four the four women came and they said, Would you train us? Said, yeah, no bother. Start training them. Got really good results from because it was personalised, right? And then they told their friends. And in a matter of about three or four months, that gym, that, that attic space was packed. Because it was the kind of first type boot camp in Dublin, like, you oh, know? Oh, yeah, yeah. And it just happened organically, it just happened by chance, like by an opportunity. So for me, uh, and that escalated, then I was, I was doing my leaving cert at that stage, that escalated into four gyms then. And I was kind of like, wow, this is mad. I don't have a clue about business. Big, Making yeah. loads of money here. What am I doing? And uh, that came from GA. That came from me just getting a little bit of a profile of playing for the dubs. So that's uh, how it escalated. Yeah. And that's where I am today, like in the, in the fitness industry. Deadly. That, yeah. that, do you know what that's a good little example for any player that's making it because the the, the biggest thing we see is like oh so I'm just going to make it yeah. and it's like yeah but like what like that's a good example of the idea of like um, all four coat no knickers at, yeah. at, the, at, the, at the moment isn't yeah. it like yeah. it's like you, you, you live in the idea yeah but it's going to be grand mm. I'm, I'm going to make it like and I want to have a nice car and I want to yeah. have what I have and some of them just they, they think it's just going to pop out of the air yeah. do you get what I mean and I always say the big thing for me, kids nowadays, is that we fall in love. We fall in love with the result, right? Um, everybody's looking at the US and going, right? I will show up at a gym and I'll become Paddy Hill and I'll become Connor and become all that. They don't know what's put behind that, like you know. <laughs> so they, we fall in love with the victory and not the fight. Yes, right? that's a great way of looking at it. So um, don't fall in love with the victory. That's yeah, what use fall that. in love with the fight. I loved the. I lo- I, I embraced that part where I knew I was going to struggle and the struggle would be worth it. I could have left college because I was making so much money with uh, the gyms. I could have left college. It was in my last year and I was like, what am I doing going to college? Like, I have the money, I have a career. What? But I knew that like one day that would come back to help me. One day that would help somebody else. Yes. Me mate going to college after me like and doing the same programme. So that, and now I'm in Mount Joy developing a programme like I'm helping facilitate the prisoners develop their own programme based off the course I did in DCU. So it came back to me eventually. Like, it that's always struggle. comes back full set. Really, yeah. as I said, even when I went to Canada at the time, I was out there on a coaching 
uh, I was on a leisure coaching studies course right. where I was learning how to coach like kids with disabilities. I was learning how to coach football, American football. Like I was, I was coaching everything. I was doing fun and games Brilliant. in like a kindergarten school meeting at lunchtime. Mm. I was setting up fun and game playing duck duck goose and, yeah, yeah. and all this stuff. Now like a huge kids program here, and as I said, we didn't know that like I was going to come back to be teaching kids after the UFC. But then that's where my kind of like I really really enjoy the idea of like I got some kids like that like when I say kids are fourteen or fifteen man, and just to see like like you say what Max like yeah. like I'd say you get like when you're going there there, uh, not that you're getting <laughs> or say, some of your some some of your clients you can go like or some classes will be like some days are gonna be like well, you have to get this one done yeah but what, yeah you know what I mean? yeah yeah but then yeah. I say when yeah. you're driving towards Max it's kind of like. Because you yeah. guess something out of them in the idea of like you see his development and, and it gives you that kind of like, um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's energy, the great like. thing. And I have to say, I have to give great uh plaudits to like I, I haven't seen the way you teach, but I know Owen Roddy is a brilliant coach. Great coach. He maybe took that from John, but I've done boxing and I've done MMA and uh. And I've watched them train kids, and I love it. I love, I love learning off it. I haven't been to MMA in a couple of a while. Like, I, I actually, own I had an attic space in Ballymun Kickums, and down below was a studio. I own first started renting <coughs> space down below off me, and uh, and then he progressed into where he is today in his, his new gym. Like, and that would have been uh, before primal would have been. He was primal at that stage. He was primal. Was that that wasn't yeah. the one just there in the new the one before the new one was it? No, it was before that. Before that, Before again. that, so he was starting off, and uh, I loved MMA. I was doing a bit of uh, toy boxing with Paddy Clint out in Chupas oh, in, in the Long Mile Road. Paddy used to be upstairs, yeah, yeah, upstairs. We used to be downstairs. And uh, Dave was over at that stage, Dave yeah, Rogan. Deadly. But, uh, but I used to, I used to um, see Roddy doing the training with the kids downstairs in that small unit. And I always wanted to do MMA, and I approached Roddy and I said, look, we'll kill two birds with one stone here. Do you want to rent this space down here? And uh, that means I can do the... Uh, the MMA I can learn it, and f funnily enough, when it, it got to the stage where every every off season I went back to do MMA, the lads just got so good. I was good because uh, I was athletic, I was big and strong from the ga, so I had that advantage over the other lads. <laughs> so the, we were all kind of on the same level technically, and then I was going back year after year, and you had Ian Cleary and Ryan Cordes, Ryan Cordes and Danny Hall, and all these boys were going up to technically flying. Like I'm just like. This just shows how good the coaching is yeah. and the quality of Owen, and obviously he took that from John as well. So that's yeah. and I say, it's, but I say as well as like like well, we know that Owen teaches. I, I taught the kids, so any kids that mm. he teaches, Owen started there. Like I know, yeah. I know John didn't take the kids' classes. Yeah, Owen took them. Owen them yeah, so a yeah. lot of the stuff would yeah. be like hundred percent. A lot of the a lot of them ethics come from John. The mm. idea of like the, the safe training and the aliveness and stuff like that. But I, I, Roddy has huge props on a lot of the sessions that he does and creating them do you get what yeah, I mean like it's yeah. like he is the creator of a lot of the is stuff he? that you Brilliant. do see yeah. which is is incredible like I know a lot of the footwork stuff and all like like yeah, I probably I probably never done footwork with John to be honest yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I know what Roddy I've done mm. and um, Anto as well as another kind of guy there sorry right. um, Anto from England comes over and oh, he's yeah. taught he's shown on a lot of uh, yeah. footwork because so, it's only that I, don't, I was out there I used to go yeah. and do sessions with Roddy yeah. as well and then uh, this guy Anto was there and mm. he, I remember him showing me stuff and I was like yeah, in, a, yeah. in one night do you know when you get yeah. that coach yeah, yeah, and he just changes just wanna, everything yeah. on you you know what I mean but it's um, as you, you mentioned there like with, with, with Roddy had been out like two lads doing something so creative in a different genre yeah, yeah. did you watch um, did you watch the press conference last night I did I did um, I spent most of my time laughing I'm a big SPG fan even though I'm not even involved but just based off Roddy like the connection I had yeah, with Roddy and, course, and, yeah. and, I look, and I follow the stuff that, I'm, that, that everybody's doing yourself and and uh, uh, Chris even out in Swords Chris Williams yeah um, great guy Tom King yeah, out there as well yeah like. so uh, and I, I, I'd Cottle I'd, I'd know Cottle and stuff like that so I, I, I was always well I would have been a big fan of the SPG lads when they were coming through and, and a, a big fan of Connor because I remember Connor speaking a couple of years ago uh, in uh, we were at a, a conference somewhere I think it was down in Malahoyed somewhere and he was speaking and, and John uh, had Kieran McGinney there 
Kieran's a Kieran was speaking. Yeah. Time as well. So Kieran was speaking. Kieran's a lot of coaching stuff would have come from Kieran as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, he's very, know. yeah, he's, Kieran's he's very a legend in the GA world. He was world. influential yeah. in a lot of the, the 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 actual structured coaching that we were receiving. Yeah, he always asked me to go down and, and do it wrong, and I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> Kieran, you're alright. <laughs> no, we carried on. But uh, yeah, but John was speaking, and, and Connor was speaking, and uh, he he uh, it was brilliant the way he spoke then because he was like John was like. This is on, uh, and Ash was speaking. They, Ash Daly was speaking there as well. And he was like, "Just talk us through your nutrition." And he was like, "Fucking blueberries, fucking this, fucking that." And I was just like, "This guy is good. I like the way yeah. he's just being himself." And for me, last night, uh, I kind of, for me, it went a bit the opposite way. You know, yeah. I'm a fan of Connor, right? So, but I'll take, I'll say it the way it is. You know, yeah. Uh, he kind of went like real Dublin type. How he kind of, yeah, I wouldn't say scumbagish, but like you know, he too over the you know, he, he could see the aggression in what he was trying yeah, to say, yeah, and yeah. I can't really say it the right way. I, I don't <laughs> well, want to well, offend them the right no, way. No, but. no, you're right. No, but there was definitely there's an energy there of it, but I think that energy was like the kind of I really don't like like lot, yeah, there was like, a lot of anger. Yeah, in there's it, a lot of see. stuff that like it, like. I know, like well, I know the idea of like I say looking at Khabib, the whole world thinks he's invincible and stuff yeah. like that, but like. I just can't see it like in the UAE. I can't. I, I, I think his striking, Connor's striking is like you'll know from, from sparring. It's unbelievable. Like, and we, I will never experience a, a box off him. And I think the first time. You never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I probably will have this thing. I'm only I'm only I'm only All over the day. Yeah. Yeah. I only, I only okay. in fairness, I only say that because I respect him. And I, I'm no, sure listen, there's loads of people that will say, yeah, loads of people will talk shit and go, oh, he was brilliant and all, but I'm not that person. Like, uh, I'm not trying to make friends you're, with yeah, Connor, but like, opinion. you know what I mean? I like him. Um, but for me, I just I, I can't the, the press I think it was shit that there was no fans allowed I know that there would have been shit. a bit of uh, argy that would have been mad energy as well wouldn't it but um, yeah I think that was shit but I, I do think I think I'd say the game plan is obviously that could be will we'll, we'll try hold them to, to four or five rounds like you know and try exhaust them yeah. that's I think that that's what everybody's probably saying about Connor is the gas and issue like you know from what I've heard the sparring partners he's brought in are top quality top lads quality. from um, Chechen and lads, Chechen and lads or something like um, that. and Connor's apparently and I, I've seen the, the little video clips that he's he's put up he looks in really good nick like you know to me yeah. I think last night was a good example of um, of he, like he, he looks ready mm. you know, like he look, and, he, and, he, and he's ready in the way of like I think it was very important to kind of to flex like that in front of uh, Khabib and in front of like his manager Ali and stuff like that because but I think that was really important to be very Dublin in that way of like yeah well that's that's a good way of putting it actually I never I never looked at uh, for me I was looking at the emotional control of the two lads yeah. I was saying right what's the game what's the psychological game here and you look at uh, Khabib and he's nice and he's controlled his emotions are controlled U ultimately you know from being there that the adrenaline is firing inside you but you're like relax relax so I'm, I'm sure he's not he i'm sure could be able to understand he's not going to win that fight of talking and, and the banter he's not going to win it so there's no point getting involved but it was nice to see that he actually started to fire up a little bit then he was kind of questioning connor and i i think that's where <coughs> connor's kind of that dublin type thing maybe worked you know yeah that this is what i mean like being an irish begrudgery type person going, yeah, yeah. fuck say connor don't be don't be you know, you know, you don't have to. We're from Dublin. Don't do that. That's just yeah. where I'm coming from. From yeah, Spartan's right. aspect, I know where it comes from. I know what he's trying to do. Like, well, I think. It I is. think he got him. I think yeah. he got him. I do. Yeah. <laughs> this is my ship. <laughs> Cunis, <Cunest>, please. <laughs> but I know what you mean. Yeah, um, I have a question for you. Um, it's the force. Ulti force ultimately, like. yeah. Ultimately, uh, again, I'm I'm being into sports performance, like you know, and I I am fascinated by Connor um, and John. John, I'm actually fascinated with John's coaching style. I think uh, there's a big opportunity that's being missed by Connor as a person, right? And uh, I'd like your opinion on it. Actually, I think, as I said, Connor could make all the money in the world and it'll still be the same. Uh, yeah. and, and there's things that he'll do that people will be pissed off about. And that's 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 up to him, and that's up to them to be pissed off about mm. his legacy. What could his legacy possibly be? 
we changed everything. Yeah. Which uh, the, one of the biggest things I would say for it is he improved the pay and made a vocal that MMA fighters were not getting paid. Now we know GAA players are not getting paid. Yeah, but yeah. The, you probably get about three or four years in MMA. We're not getting punched on like, yeah. like, yeah. like, <laughs> Sometimes they look like his boys are coming at it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I think the legacy part of that is that he changed the whole game for a better of where he made he made fighters and other people realize that they, they these guys aren't they, they they like so say if say if Dana rang you back in the day you would have been like oh, you would have did anything you know what yeah. I mean where now you're kind of realizing hold on I have a wart and I have a like I have something to bring to the table here and like even at the time when I was in the UFC I didn't know me wart but yeah. I know it now. Let well, you're irre- like nowadays, like it's, ex- you know, you're replaceable. Like you know, well, sorry, yeah, when, no, you're right. back then you're with, right. with Dana, he's like, now you have one who are taking a lot of fires. I know you have Bellator taking a few big names. Yeah, I think that's going to be important for the welfare. Of the, but for <laughs> me, right, here's the here's the missed opportunity for Connor, and it, maybe it will, Connor, and and again, you'll have loads of people think they know it all. You know, mm. and sure, John gets it all the time. Connor should be doing this. But for me, mad messages, mad. Yeah, like, exactly. if, I can imagine what them boys get because <laughs> yeah. we get like Connor should be doing this and that. You know, but if, if he watches Bugs Bunny on a <laughs> Tuesday, everything's gonna be grand. <laughs> yeah. like, like out there stuff. Like. <laughs> but I think for me, my two most favorite combat f- sports people, uh, and again, UFC is still young. Muhammad Ali and Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. Two most fa- a great favorite. Why? Because they use sport to help people. Yeah. I think that's the missed opportunity for Connor. To help people in in a in a like in a sp- in, in sport environment. Yeah. He's helping massive amount of people in life, though. In life, I think. See, I think a lot. I think, and this is the big thing. I think that people miss about Connor is, and like I said, look, I. I to me, Connor is he, he's not just a friend where I, I defend him because he's yeah. a friend. You got know what I mean? I've seen things that. He didn't post and didn't like make a big deal out of that he's enough, done. Yeah. Mm. And you get what I mean? Like, mm. like, it's my shopping around. T- my Connor around the shop yesterday. So your woman said to me like, "Oh, we love Connor and all, but we fucking love you. You're the yeah. community lad." And you know what I mean? And <laughs> I said that, like, "Yeah." Like, and she was like, but "Connor was around on the road taking pictures with all the kids and stuff like that." She was like, "Oh, was he? Yeah. Like, he was around on my road yeah. there doing pictures with all the kids and all like and that." That, like, going over the fact that when back in the day, Robbie Keane used to do them yeah, things as well, right, and right. no one gave him the credit for it. No, either. yeah, and and that and, and in fairness, um, when people do good things, they don't generally they don't do good things to, for the public. Like, but there is a, there is a part of his legacy that, in my head, I'd love him to kind of go after, go after more. He's not that he's not doing it, but he, I'd, I'd say, and he's it's probably hidden. Maybe you maybe can imagine on, what ha- you, but yeah. you can imagine what happens when it changes, like when yeah. when it's all over. Well, that's probably yeah. There's a yeah. lot. There's a lot more to do there when it, when it's all over. Yeah. Who have you got in in uh, the Connor and Khabib fight? I have definitely Connor first or second round uh, knockout. Yeah. Yeah, and go if it goes further, I would say um, I think Khabib is obviously going to try to spoil it. You yeah. know, he's, he's, going, he's it's his style, he's, isn't it? He's got to try to wrestle him and get him to the ground. That's the obvious thing to think of, like. Um, and he's trying to he's trying to gas him. I'd say that's that's for me. Yeah, that's my. Oh, I, I think so as well. I think I think I think the second for myself. Here, actually, I think there's a good chance he's not gonna he's not gonna show up. And Ferguson will step in. Do you know what? I was fucking thinking that yeah. myself, especially yeah. after the last night. He yeah. might be like, do you know what? Maybe I rattled just the wrong. Catch. And especially when he came out saying that he, he didn't really want to come over to the to the press conference because he's cutting weight. And, and the cut and waiting as well as he like, could he could look to the UFC and say here use your, use your fault I was cut and waiting he's told me to come over here well like, yeah and he wouldn't it wouldn't be the first time he pulled out yeah. you know what I mean that's what Connor hit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what Connor got really well in the, in the press conference yeah, you know, that's okay yeah, that. I think that Dublin is man I don't know about yourself man but I think he whacked him out with Dublin is and that was yeah. I know it was like but it needed to be Dublin like that and anyway yeah. let's move yeah on. fair enough fair enough yeah, yeah. Winning the Sam Maguire, yeah. What the, what, what does that feel like? The, the time the whistle goes because it always seemed to be like a point at here at the end. Like, is it always a oh, fuck? We're gonna yeah. lose this or oh. yeah. The, like we like people say, like there's a massive difference between the, the county teams. Dublin are flying ahead, and the rest of the counties are miles behind. But any All Ireland we've won, we've we've kind of we've struggled to perform to the extent of our standards, <laughs> and uh, we've won. Probably by a point or two, like you know. So the the yeah, it, do you know what, Paddy? It's the whole year. It's the journey. It's the pain and the suffering you've got for the whole year, and you just 
yeah, that was worth it. That was worth you know? it. It's the it's the family stuff. It's the your girlfriend not going away. It's you know the nights that the, like the study came out the other day. We spent on average the, the the GA player spends about thirty hours a week training and playing football. Like you you could imagine that not getting paid thirty hours. You've got your forty to fifty hours work. That's over one hundred and sixty eight hours a week, yeah. and you're you've got very little to live your life with. Like you know so. It's it's a brilliant feeling to, and it's the it's you're walking down the road and you're, you know people are yeah but you're just bringing so much joy into people's lives. Going to the hospitals the next morning to the kids. This is what I'm saying. How does that incredible? That's the best feeling. That's like you get a massive amount of kick and joy out of after the game. It's not un undeniable feeling. Like it's incredible. But when you walk in to the to the hospitals the next morning and these kids have their jerseys on, they've been watching and screaming their heads off the telly. At whatever illness they've had, some of them really bad illnesses, you just go, Jesus, that's all worth it. It just stops for a little bit all worth it, doesn't like, it? You know, yeah, that, that kid, you've given that kid the pain and suffering they have right now with that bit of energy. That's... Do you that's feel like the GAA are making a fortune? I have to ask you that. Was, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We just count tickets and I was like, <laughs> come on, please. It's... Uh, yeah, yeah. The financially, they're they're in a really good place. Does, I would say. Would every Dublin odd player, million a year? I'd say. Would every Dublin player be in a position to buy a house? Well, they're not asking you to speak. At for some people. stage, they would. Like I mean, look, like, we as a, a GA football, you're kind of you don't get paid, but you get supported a lot mm. through different ways. So, for example, uh, a lot of us would have the opportunity of getting a scholarship going to university. Okay. Your fee is looked after maybe because you some, play for some the, colleges. Would you play for the college? You then? play for the college team then, yeah. Okay. And uh, so, so you get your education. So most GA players will be very uh, highly educated. Dotty O'Callaghan is a good friend of mine. Is he? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't. I don't know. I'm fitness stage now. Yeah. My bastard. Yeah. Man. Funny very how good. I remember one day he's he's a very good player, isn't he. Yeah, he's class. Like, well, he's very good footballer. He's very good, excellent hauler. Obviously, played more hauling than football. But the all sport stars football. is what he did. Yeah, I remember yeah. one day seeing him like a, a slit. I got hit. We were playing rounders or something like in this like playing fun and games thing on this course that you were doing. I know you mean this slit. I was going at him like a hundred miles. <laughs> Call it. I don't know how it didn't kill him. It would have put a hole through him, wouldn't it? But another great man. He would yeah, great give man. us a good favourite. Uh, one of your favourite players to play with. Yeah. In banter wise or in. in Both. One ah, for geez. banter, one for skill. There's a load of. Uh, well, Dave McConley would be the most skillful player I've ever played he's with. Man, yeah, really. yeah, he's very good. Not Paddy Munner, is he? No, Jesus. He's, there. he's far from Paddy Munner. He's Vincent. Oh, is That's he? Yeah, rivalry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was a bad one. No, no, he's from yeah, he's sorry yeah. about that one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'd have good clashes now. Um, technically, he's probably the most. You know, he's 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 got he's he's definitely the the best potential technically. Um, and definitely that that feeds into him being probably a, a big favorite of of GA fans. Like you know, so he would definitely technically be the best I, I've played with. Um, the best banter. Uh, do you know what? If, Jesus Christ, the lads in Bally want to kill me, but I actually liked Joe Brennan's banter uh, when he played. He was always, he, he was good crack. Um, you'd have lads <laughs> now, you'd have Kev McMahon, who's, who's, who's a good lad for entertaining the group. Um, over the years, you just have different, you kind of caught me off guard, but in terms of banter, we've had loads. You can't of be lads doing that. the loads, you know what the crazy thing is, buddy? I'd walk into my change room one day and I'd be looking around and I'd be like, Jesus, full of head cases in this change room. <laughs> full of crazy. And you do that a lot. And we're, we're all crazy in our own way. Oh, definitely. Like, I'm sure people are going, Finny McMahon over there, he's bleeding bonkers. Like, but, yeah, but we're all crazy in our own he's way. Like, and then he's like, Run! Yeah. You could have like Stephen Cluxon crazy in his own way. You could have. Um, it's deadly, him, isn't he? Yeah, you could have loads of different lads that have their own personalities and you're just going, Jesus, this is great to be a part of. Like, this. That's what that's the great thing about team environment and same. Probably I'm probably going to get you to put this in on this, Robin, because Robin does all the editing and stuff like right. that. But see the part on the radio ad, man, when the Dublin thing's coming up and he talks about, he's like, oh, the Stephen Cluck forward. knocked it over the bar. Yeah, yeah. You're walking down, you're holding your hands through the toilet. Yeah. Like, get your flags, <laughs> boy, not me. Fran, I love you. Is that who it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're definitely putting that on the podcast because now what I was thinking, yeah. I'm probably going to have to ask somebody, can I do that? Yeah. Frano, you're fucking sound. Yeah, They're yeah, not be up to the yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's who that is. That's the voice on it, yeah. I'm going to put that in. If you haven't checked this out, you're going to get to listen to this part and then, and then the podcast. Yeah. Heroes.
our heroes, our boys in blue, our tribe, our warriors, Hill 16 on a sunny Sunday, like nowhere else on earth. The greatest show on earth, up the dubs, in the blood. My uncle never missed a match. He was known to leave a wedding early for the dubs. He's there in spirit now on Hill 16, and when they win, smiling. True blue, true blood, because Hill 16 has never seen the likes of Hefo's army. Pints, match day, family, superstitions, lucky jersey, lucky bra. Praying it doesn't rain, slagging culties with their hanged sandwiches. The dubs will shut them up. Walking down Jones's road, come on ye boys in blue. Walking into town, flags coming out of every car. No better sight in Crow Park than the dubs hand passing their way to go. Grandad screaming at the telly, sit down. The passion, the loyalty, the most loyal fans. And they earned every one. Dublin, the dubs, the sea of blue. Going through the turnstiles in your dad's shoulders. Standing next to the brothers and sisters you've never met. We're the 16th man. Hat, scarves and headbands. Thinking of me dad. He followed them all over and shed many a tear of sadness and joy. I get goosebumps when the dubs come out on the pitch. The whole city comes together. Laughs in the stand, caught in camera at half time. Where granddad stood, where my daughter stands, in her blue. We put my three year old nephew in the sand. Tears in my eyes, sack fell for me nerves. Quins for the celebration. Proud to be a dub. The Artane Boys Band. The parade of teams. That roar. The tears I cried when Cluxon scored the winner. It's family. Our family. Up the dubs. The Strawberry Alarm Clock. Supporting the dubs on FM 104. But here... It's brilliant, isn't it? See when that comes Spine on... tingling, isn't it? That gives me the tingles. <laughs> like, I would listen to that yeah. walking to war, I would. Yeah, it's, it's just brilliant. one of them things, isn't it? And it explains... The heritage of Dublin GAA, you know? It explains it really, really well. Mm. And it explains the things that... That 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 you're on about with mm. the, them happiness, the, the the memories that you give the, to people, you know what I mean? It's the representation of Dublin GAA from years and years ago. To we always say we're standing on the shoulders of the, the shoulders Shows of giants, giants, you know, because we we just hold the jersey for the next generation, you know. But that's it, like you know, it's Dublin GAA. It's it's incredible, like you know, because um, a lot of people will talk about. Dublin are winning because of money and population. Dublin are winning because of culture, <coughs> because of um, the love of, of the Dublin community. That's it. Because Dublin GAA, uh, I'm not sure what year it was, but basically the county board got together and said, look, we haven't won that in 16 years. We need to put development in the underages and we need to invest in that. And that hopefully in a couple of years' time will, ha- will, will flourish. And that's what's happened, right? So that's because of the heritage of the... The Dublin GEA, that's why that's happened. Not gonna do with money or, or no, because this is what people are saying. Because the like, population, the next question is gonna say, yeah. So, all the boys outside of Dublin, <laughs> 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 Rory Stories is a great example. Now, you see his stuff, <laughs> Rory Stories, brilliant, brilliant, yeah, he's isn't a friend it? of mine. Yeah. I had him on, he's a good man. He's a little shout out there for your Rory yeah, as well. Great he's lad. a good man, yeah. he is, but yeah. um. He he was a great with the idea of like because down the country it's like, <laughs> man, it's deep, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, deep, it is. you know. Like it I'm is, pretty yeah. sure if you walk through Mayo, you'd be lettered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like I mean, like, it's funny, like uh, even on the likes of Twitter and stuff like that, you're getting hammered all the time, and that's just it. Like you be, you can you can be a genius for other people, and other people can hate you for the same thing. Like you know, that's just know. the way the world is. But for me, uh. Yeah, it's 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 got to the stage where you've that Man United type thing where you're winning so much and everybody hates you no matter what. Everyone like, hates you, know? you for winning. But uh, uh, yeah, <coughs> so so like I mean, I actually put a tweet up there the other day. But I don't know if you've seen it, the the Billy Joe Saunders video. It's disgusting. I won't get into it. And it, it's what was it about? It was a, it was a girl who was an addict and pulled her over the car and was like. Uh, do these certain things and hit this fella and whatever else. It was just the grade and it was horrible, disgusting. 
in and anyway I put up no, it was just voicing my opinion that I was it was disgusting and it was cowardly. And this fella then comments on it about something I did in Ghana and I was like, What's that got to do with that? Like you know, so you get a lot of that shit, like especially yeah. when you're on social media, but you just have to deal with it. Like, it's you know? gone, no, yeah, and it's yeah. like but back in nineteen ninety two we've seen you shit you're not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? That was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is it is mental when you kind of you you think of the 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 love that is in it and then it was like like my girlfriend like as I only had to understand them what the GAA is she lives yeah. over here four years now right. but like she understood over the four years what it is but like yeah. she, she didn't know there was a sport over here that was like because <laughs> it was like we don't care about your soccer yeah, you know yeah, what I mean yeah. she was like, like some people do obviously yeah. they, they're mad about but here's a no shame question for you right who do you think deserves to win the Sam Maguire except for the, uh, Dubs. For the Dubs who do you think deserves deserves who would you feel bad for? Who would you, if you could give one out there for you boys? Who okay. would you give the Sam? Yeah, the, the, the obvious question. Ah, oh, look, I'd love to give it to a team that hasn't won it, like you know. But but because I'm always competing with the teams that kind of are close to winning. Like yeah. a lot of people would say, Mayo have fallen short the last three three occasions. They've lost three All Ireland finals. And that's that's harsh. Like stop, I played. I heard, by I heard the sadness is up in Mayo. Yeah, yeah. Last three years, the real sadness West, game yeah. is going up. Yeah. Um, and they haven't won it in a long, long time, you know. Um, they believe they've a course. Some of the fans, the Mayo fans, have believed they've a course. Uh, I believe that's what's wrong with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> believe that the course is the problem. But yeah. uh, they, they go, should have got the Pope to get rid of it. Yeah, like I, yeah, they <laughs> get the Pope, Pope off the bless them. Someone over took a coffin or something like that, or a funeral or something like that. And there was that team, a, a team bus over took a funeral or something like that. And, yeah. That's what it's supposed one to be. Man alive still, yeah, yeah. yeah. So one man alive. One man alive. That's so. mental because you know what mob mentality. That man wouldn't yeah. make it too long. Yeah. Like, yeah. They don't win the next year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, He's going to be found in a box close, somewhere yeah. down the mail. I, I, my dad's from Belfast and Antrim, so it's probably a long shot, but I'd love Antrim to win it. We used to, as a kid, we spent many days in Casement Park. Right. Yeah. Do you know what? It's a shame now. It's actually, it's, 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 the, it's dilapidated now. It's just full of, it's, it, uh, hopefully they do it up soon enough. Many days, yeah, in Casement Park here in Anderson Town Road. Great thing. Like, I used to yeah, live yeah. up the road from it. Right, right, right. Yeah, so. My yeah. dad's from around the corner there in Lennardown originally, yeah. yeah. That's mental. Yeah. That's where we used to live. No way. We used to live in Horn Drive. Jeez. In there you yeah, go. around the corner from Ashid's shop. Right, right. That's right. mental. Yeah, I right yeah. know I'd finish on this with you. Yeah. A, a positive, but a kind of negative as well. So when you won the All Ireland this year, I, I I couldn't help but you you were you were thinking of your father. Because yeah. you? your father passed this year, was it? This yeah. year or last year? He passed this year, July the fourth this year. This year. Yeah. Yeah. Was he was yeah. he sick for a long time? He was diagnosed with stomach cancer, um it was uh, I think it was June. 2017, May, June 2017, yeah, so he had cancer for the year. Did yeah. he get to see you win us, Sam? He did last year, yeah, yeah, so yeah that was incredible. It was, it was an amazing gift uh, that I, I would say all the lads gave me, the backroom team, every last man for us to help help us achieve winning a Sam Maguire, he was there. And uh, I remember he normally would have ran down to the, my dad's a big proud man and he'd, he'd gone through the trouble, so he'd had a lot of suffering in his life. and. So he doesn't really show emotions, but yeah. after an all Ireland final, he, he he balls his eyes out. Uh, but that year, he obviously he was very ill, and he was in the stand. And uh, we bet Mayo, and I'm looking to see where he is down, and I'm like, please don't come down. So he's up in the Hogan stand. I'm like, wait there, I'm coming up to you. So I jumped over the, the railings, and uh, I'm pushing by a few people nicely, and the Mayo fans are dragging me back. Where are you going? And give me a bit of hassle. I'm just like, listen. Stop, like, oh me, I'm going up to see my dad, and, and I had to go through the seat, jump over the seats to get up to him. So that was a, it was That's one of the proudest moments I've had, you know. What a moment, yeah. And what a moment for a father, you a yeah. father? My, no, I'm not, no, oh, yeah, not. yeah, yeah. No, we've got one on the way, and oh, I can tell you right here, right yeah, now, from your yeah. father's point of view, yeah. that if we see my youth like getting over the fence, yeah. come up and say hello to me, yeah. let alone I have to win an all yeah. in the final, I'll be yeah. proud as punch. Yeah, yeah, thanks very much, yeah, yeah. No, look, this year he wasn't there, um. I would hope him to, to get there. He was there in spirit. Uh, one of my mates done a beautiful thing. Uh, he's a big MMA fan. I'll give him a shout out Mossy. He's uh, he's probably... If you watch the video of Roddy winning the Cage Warriors, wasn't it Cage Warriors? Cage contenders. contenders. Yeah. The one that was in the basketball arena. He was at that fight. fought me knife out the night before. The day they fought before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually remember, yeah. yeah. Excellent moment. Yeah. And, and Roddy, like... I don't know how Roddy didn't tap out on that rear naked oh, choke. Wasn't the rear naked choke he was in? Yeah, rear naked yeah. choke. And uh, 
the fella, the, the big Gooley. lad that's jumping on the cage, that's me mate Mossy. Is legend. it? Yeah, yeah. You probably know Baldy fella. Uh, legend, you know, when you legend. said Mossy yeah, there, yeah. I was like, I'm pretty sure right now Mossy. Yeah, yeah. But like, Talabali more than a few of Mossy. You know him around, but he's, uh, for me, he's a, he's a, I, I'm a UFC fan, but he's a massive UFC fan. And he done a beautiful thing. He, uh, he said to me a few days before, he said, look in the hill, uh, when you're walking around the pray it, I have something for you. I said, right, grand. So I'm looking around the hill and it's like just blue and I'm like, what am I looking out for here? And I'm walking around the pray and I'm looking and see Anne, what's this going on? So I didn't see Anne. And then the ritual after we win the all out the Sam Maguire, we run over to the hill with the cup and we're just about to walk off, all the fans, I'm just about to walk off to go around the Cusick stand and do a lap of honour. And then I spot him there and uh, he throws the t-shirt over to me. And uh, it was a T-shirt. My dad looked like Walter White. He's right, the image of Walter White. So he had the Walter White uh, face and then saying it was her, Philly's her. So it was, it was a beautiful moment for me. It was very emotional. Um, and it was just very thoughtful, I suppose. But it's... Uh, incredible. Yeah. To have some mates like that is incredible. Yeah, definitely. And mm. I, it, it, the last level, I've heard you saying that, uh, and it's a great way of explaining spirit. I'm not getting goosebumps there. Yeah. That story. Yeah. The spirit you explained, you said it's when the times that you're tired, that's when you know that they're with you. That's yeah. when you know your brother John's with you and your yeah. father's with you because they, they're the people you think about. Yeah, exactly. It's mental. When, when does, I used yeah. to try and I used to, mm. my, my son is here and I used, but I used to think about my grand and my son. My, my, I used to think yeah. about my son. Yeah. Pushing. Spiritual power, motivation, yeah. Yeah, every mm. time you feel tired, you kind of, is he watching? You yeah. know, is he watching? And yeah. that is the crazy thing. Yeah. Phil, you're an absolute gentleman. Thanks very much for having me on, Paddy. Really enjoyed it. That was episode 43 of No Shame. 44, was it? See, Robin's on the ball. (laughs) Robin knows this stuff. 44. It was an absolute pleasure to have this gentleman on. I've been looking forward to this. I really have been. Uh, Thanks, John Lally and Avon Stringer for putting me on to as well. And if you haven't checked out that episode, make sure you check it out. Look after yourself.